Hmm. A list of names? Somehow related to chemical agents? What if it was Gil who killed his partner, Randall Lee, under Mitchell's orders? Subject, Brunhilde Gruner. Treatment, day 1,500. The patient's ability to speak continues to diminish. Now she can only pronounce the occasional word in German. Tissue degeneration persists. And yet, Perhaps due to drastic reduction of benzoprodine dosage and an increase of anupropion, we have observed a 3% of deceleration of said degeneration. Furthermore, and perhaps this is the best finding so far, the subject exhibits a mild recovery of her speaking. It's not a lot, and yet... We are on the right track. All hope is not lost. Mitchell, who fought with Dunn during the war, tried to pass as Yale's doctor. Subject, Craig Spano. Treatment, De Zero. The subject is a veteran baseball player. 
who has lost speed, strength, and agility due to the regular aging process. The patient refers intense pain on the right scapula, most likely caused by an old injury. The goals of our medical approach are twofold. To relieve pain caused by the prior injury so that the subject can play without symptoms and to help the patient regain the physical condition lost in the aging process, thus allowing him to perform at elite levels. Treatment. Day 120, the patient no longer feels pain when using his right arm, circumstance that allows him to pitch without fear. So far, the only side effect seems to be a slight euphoria experienced three hours after dosage, which subsides four hours later, taking the patient on an emotional roller coaster of sorts with bouts of mild trembling. Treatment, day 341. Moments of euphoria and boosted physical performance have become increasingly short while the ensuing periods of depression and weakness have become longer, including severe tremors. Although we have met all therapeutic goals, we will proceed to terminate the treatment. In order to avoid causing irreparable physical and mental damage to the patient, Mitchell is cashing in by selling drugs to enhance athletes' performances. Mitchell's scheme isn't that it's illegal or unethical, it's that he didn't even care about compromising the athlete's health. Gil? You know you're not allowed down here. You know you're not allowed. It's... You bastard. Oh. I should kill you right here, right uh, now. Uh, I don't know. You don't know? I know you're testing drugs on that girl. Brunhilde? No. She's my daughter. She was born with a degenerative disease. A rare condition similar to the Angleman syndrome. There are only four known cases like hers, and none of the patients reach the age of five. But I couldn't give up. I continued to research and found something. It didn't make her better, but anyway, that same treatment used on healthy subjects seems to improve their stamina. And their reflexes? It also seems to improve their pain threshold. Somehow, the Reich heard about my experiments and tried to recruit me to create super soldiers. Yes, that Reich. We're talking late 30s, Berlin. 
I escaped with Brunhilde and came to your country. But the American military also heard about me. I spent the entire war experimenting with drugs on soldiers. Some were highly effective, I must say. When the war was over, my experiments were discarded. I was forbidden all access to the drugs, and Brunhilde got worse. But then God sent me Angus Mitchell. We had met during the war, and he came to offer me a deal. I would make drugs for athletes, and he would sell them. With my earnings, I could pay for Brunhilde's treatment. What else do you want me to say? I noticed Yale's name appears twice on your list of athletes. One mention was crossed out. Why? I don't know. A couple of months ago, Mitchell told me to prepare pills suited to his profile. But a week ago, he told me to stop. And then two days ago, he asked me to make them again. About those pills. What is he looking at? Don't dwell on it, Josh. You had to tell him the truth in order to protect Brunhilda. I would have done the same thing. Finish packing up your things and stop torturing yourself, okay? Thanks, Angus. I won't be long. Oh, honey. You like living here? Yeah, me too. But we have to go somewhere else and it's all that bad cat's fault. Yes, sweetie. We're going to a new home now. A prettier one. And you'll be happier there. Now go with Papa, honey. Give him a kiss, go on. Give him a kiss, go on. <laughs> I'm... I'm sorry about this, Josh, but... We gave it our best, didn't we? Huh? What? What do you mean, Angus? I wish... It hadn't come to this. Angus, what's wrong? Goodbye, Josh. They were good people. I hope that made you feel better. I like it when you smile. You're so far from the truth. What the?
Benno just ran out that way. Greg's Fatto is back! <laughs> Did you miss me? <laughs> Who wants to see a home run? <laughs> Now you're gonna see! Bring it on! Let's go! <laughs> Don't torture yourself. You did everything you could. Will he make it? The doctors think so. They found him unconscious by the basement door. What?
Could Gil have blocked the basement door from the outside to kill Mitchell? You think? That's a serious accusation. Are you sure, or is this just a theory of yours? It's just a theory. Let's hope we get the truth out of him. Huh. You think Gil was involved in the previous murders? What if it was Gil who killed his partner, Randall Lee, under Mitchell's orders? Another serious accusation. Are you sure? Yes. Everything points in that direction, including my gut. Wait. Couldn't Mitchell be Randall Lee's murderer? So he misses with two shots at point-blank range, and then he hits a guy smack in the forehead from across the street? No. Mitchell is not the sniper who wiped out Randall Lee. Yeah, I guess you're right. But we still don't know what caused Craig Spano's death. There's no doubt about it. Spano took drugs from the lab, and they killed him. But if that were true, how many more athletes are in danger? And most importantly, who are they? Is Bobby Yale involved? I didn't see them all, but write down these names. Peter Lowe, Xavier Chains, Helen Moore, Bill Goldman, Miles Benton, Alexander Wood, Jacob Ziegler, and yes, Bobby Yale. Thanks. Saving lives for a change, huh? In any case, thanks for the call. I was starting to think you'd never trust the police again. I don't trust the cops. I trust you. Smile, Johnny boy! <laughs> Thanks for the tip. This is gonna win me the Pulitzer. <laughs> Get that guy out of here. All right. Let's get this over with. When the war ended, Mitchell convinced Groon to use his super soldier drugs on elite athletes. Somehow, Dunn found out about Mitchell's scheme. So when Mitchell heard that Dunn was on to him, he ordered Randall Lee to kill him and frame Yale for the murder. Then, he made Randall search Dunn's house and the gym for any incriminating evidence he might have had against him. The poor cleaning lady died almost by chance. When you stuck your nose in the case, he tried to scare you by sending his thugs to give you a beating. And when that didn't work, he asked Randall Lee to finish you off on the gym rooftop. But Randall not only failed, he got captured. So Mitchell ordered Gil to put a bullet through his head, which only made Gil upset. You kept getting closer and closer to the point of discovering his headquarters. When Mitchell realized he was cornered, he burned his bridges by setting the lab on fire along with Dr. Groon and his daughter. Gil saw the opportunity to get back at Mitchell, so he blocked the only exit so that he would also die in the fire. Did I leave any loose ends? Just a few. But don't worry about it. I'll take care of them now. So I guess thanks for everything. In your classic noir films and novels, solving a case never amounts to a happy ending. The detective is always left with a sense of bitterness. A feeling that, before he took the case, 
the world was a better place, that he was a better person. Come on, now speed it out! Sometimes I just let my character get the best of me. What do you want from me? I told Stone what I knew, that he was going to let Yale win, that if he didn't, O'Leary would destroy Helen Moore's career, and that Moore was doomed either way, or would be as soon as America discovered her sweetheart was on drugs. I don't believe you. No way. Who sent you? Today? Nobody. And what if I did believe you? What would that change? If I don't do this for her, how could I ever look her in the eyes? How could we stay together? You think you'll stay together when you lose your title and they accuse her of doping? At least I know I tried. I know your record. Your rise to the top is clean, free of both O'Leary's and drugs. God. You might just be one of the only honest athletes I've met recently. Please don't let them change that. Is it all about being professional to you? Suit yourself. But trust me, your manager is a murderer. Get as far away from him as possible. Hey, Black Sad! I'll think about it. Yale confirmed to me that Dunn found out that Mitchell was giving him meds. That was the reason they argued the evening of his death. In fact, I was clean at the time. Hadn't used for days. I didn't want to go down that road. I wanted to follow Joe. But he discovered everything. He didn't believe me when I said I had nothing to do with it. But you used again. Only after his death. I, I needed to cope. But the drugs gave you a panic attack. Yeah. But I've been clean ever since. Mitchell gave you the pills when he stopped by the hospital. Hence, your miraculous recovery. Are you planning on taking them before the fight? Do it. Someone has to save that gym. Sorry about your Aunt Mary. She was a good woman. Stone and Yale hadn't taken away the bitterness I felt. I needed a friend. In appreciation for the tip I'd given him, he insisted on buying me a milkshake that he drank. After the perfect storm of corruption and murder, only friendship could reconcile me with the world. Only that could make me believe in mankind again. Only that cleanse my soul.
Only that. And money. In your standard noir novel, Yale and Stone would be punished for breaking the rules. There would be justice for Sonia, the victim. But this was the real world. As the detective who had cracked the case, I just had to get my paycheck and be on my way. Nice to meet you, Mr. Blacksad. Mr. Thorpe is on his way. Care to take a seat while you wait? I guess I'll just have to wait. He'll be here in a minute. Please, take a seat. That's not possible. But what if Tim Thorpe was somehow involved in Mitchell's operation? Mr. Blackstad, Mr. Thorpe is running later than expected, but he insists on meeting you, if you don't mind. Sure, as long as you help me fight off this boredom. That's not in my job description, but... If I had her markings on my skin, would I be the same person? Would my name be different? Punch is right. There should be a meeting with Mitchell noted somewhere in Thorpe's agenda. Well, you see, I've got a problem. In order to figure out how much Mr. Thorpe owes me, I need to know what day I started working on the case. But I can't remember. You wouldn't have that written down, would you? It sure wasn't on my shift. I'd remember. Let me see.
What? Dunn was here two days before he died? Why didn't Thorpe ever mention that? I'm sorry, but your name's not on here. Has anything odd happened at the agency lately? Not on my shift. Perhaps the oddest thing I've seen is a bored detective asking a lot of questions. Wait, I just remembered something. The day I came, Joe Dunn had just walked out the door. Well, no. You don't have any appointments. Although, I guess I could have forgotten to write you in. Mr. Dunn, who's usually very kind, left in a flurry. He even slammed Mr. Thorpe's door. Okay. Now I know I have to get into Thorpe's office. And he didn't even say goodbye. Yes, that was the day. You don't recall me because the minute I saw Dunn stomp out, I followed him. I never actually came in. Of course. That explains it. No doubt. Hmm, so... Since it looks like Mr. Thorpe won't be here soon, I think I'll go take a walk down the hall. Gotta stay in shape. Come on, Thorpe. Tell me there's a back door to your office. Hmm. Should I play the Smirnoff trump card again? Smirnoff didn't know what to think. He asked me to watch out and call him as soon as I had more information. He also told me that Gil had finally talked. He denied having blocked the basement door and said the truck door opened but he got knocked on the head as soon as he tried to get out. He then woke up when the police found him beside the basement door. Obviously, the same person who had jammed the door had carried him there. If Weekly were here, I'd have to tie his hands behind his back. So... You had something to do with that chest expander after all. Cats aren't afraid of heights. That's why I've never felt vertigo. In my experience, when something looks really good, it ends up smelling really bad.
it's a bit strange to see no office chair behind a desk until you remember the desk's owner is in a wheelchair. Oh, crap. Why am I surprised? In every investigation, there comes a point where every single lead seems to go down the drain. And you have to retrace your steps to get back on the right track. I better not use it. It might be connected to the switchboard at the front desk. One of the strengths, the accuracy of his throw. I earned the nickname Iron Arm. I used to throw the ball in 50 ml. And yeah, uh, went wherever it wanted. And my coach, the great Joffrey Sox. Mm -hmm. And so I worked hard. Pearl Harbor. I enlisted immediately. After losing a partner in combat, a serious injury, I asked to be relocated. I became a sniper. I know I shouldn't say this, but I was one of the best in the army. And it was all thanks to my accuracy. No, it was all thanks to Jeffrey Sachs. I wonder how many Americans that man saved with my arm. After these words, Tim Thorpe is moved almost to tears and asks me to take a break. It's shocking to see how an athlete and soldier, a man whose aim and skill won him a medal of honor, and the nickname Surgeon among his brothers in arms. That can't be. I mean, it could be a coincidence, but no. What if Groon's drugs helped Thorpe walk? Of course, it wasn't Mitchell or Gil. It was Thorpe who shot Randall at the hospital. That's it. Thorpe is the man behind the whole drug operation. Everything adds up now. And yet I can already hear Smirnov telling me I have no conclusive evidence. What if I set a trap for Thorpe? But how? What if I place Thorpe's gun up there and corner him so that he has to stand up to get it? Uh. 
The show was about to begin. All I needed was an audience and some patience. <laughs> Stop it! Arr! Don't you know who you're <laughs> dealing with, matey? What a silly man! Now today, you wants to be shark bait, do you? <laughs> oh, Lexa. I feel terrible for keeping you waiting. John. Uh, but you see, there was mutiny on board, so... Uh, Stop! <laughs> uh, you see what I have to put up with? All right, gentlemen, to the cabin with you! Onward! <laughs> yeah, I can't. Come along, Black Sad. Julie, don't let anyone <laughs> bother us. Honey, will you wait in the boardroom for me, please? But... I'll just be a minute, then. I think you've already suffered enough. Okay. And think about where you'd like to have dinner tonight, okay? You see... I'm not going to pay you for solving the case. Fair enough. The truth is, I didn't solve it. <laughs> no, it's not that. You'll get every penny we agreed on, and more. But not because you solved the case, but for her. Two days ago, she wanted to end it all. Drop out of college, sell the gym. Too many wounds to heal. But through your incredible work, you managed to heal them. Well, perhaps not completely. It takes time to get over something like this. But at least, thanks to you, Sonia wants to be happy. She has hope. I'm going to help her make Dunn's gym the best in the city. Who would have ever guessed it, huh? I'm happy for her. She's been through a lot, and honestly, I wasn't sure she'd make it. Well, she hasn't just yet, but she will in time. Anyway, back to the case, all those people you confronted. Gil, the German doctor, even Mitchell. Huh, I would have never suspected him. Did they say anything? Why did they do it? Did they mention any accomplices? I think the only accomplice was Randall Lee. Oh yeah, that bastard. You see, besides my esteem for Joe and Sonia, this ordeal uh, really hits close to home. I would have never guessed it. Sports are my livelihood. Do you know how many of the athletes involved have a deal with me? How do you know that? What? Oh wait, Sonia told you. Yes, that, that's it. Uh, Sonia told me. That's funny. I never told Sonia. Well then, do you know how many of the athletes involved have a deal with me? I don't really know. I'll tell you. Too many. So far, the papers only talk about bodies down at the docks and an illegal lab. Not one has mentioned the athletes. But if one word gets out, this agency's future could be on the line. Not to mention Sonia's and the gym's. Could I ask you to be discreet? I will be. Don't worry. I knew I could count on you. Thank you. How much are we talking about? Ten times the agreed amount. Wow. You like to play big. I like that. Anyway, that's it. Julie has your check. Don't forget to claim it. As for your bonus, I'll send it along soon. Don't worry about it. Thank you again, Black Sad. 
I don't know what state Sonya would be in if it weren't for you. I had to act, then and there, or let Thorpe get away with it. Excuse me for not standing. No, I won't excuse you. I know you could stand if you wanted to. I... I'm sure you've got good intentions, but you're wrong. What makes you think that? I, I'm sure there's an explanation. I know that you were a highly skilled sniper, and I think it was you who shot Randall Lee at the hospital. Have you seen me, Black Sad? How could I possibly do that? I know you ordered Randall Lee to kill Joe Dunn, and you tried to frame Bobby Yale, who had recently given up your medical services. Joe was my friend, don't you get it? I hired you to solve this damn case. You think that's what a murderer would do? Only because you thought I'd blame Bobby Yale and drop the case. But as soon as I realized something wasn't right, you sent Randall Lee and Gil to give me a scare. And when all that failed, you ordered Lee to kill me. You're the type that won't open his jaws once he's got his prey, aren't you? I think I've made that clear enough by now. Put yourself in my place for a minute. You're a promising football player just got back from the war, but you're still a nobody. The man you saved kindly opens his house to you, and that man is still undone by his wife's passing. He works all day at his gym, and he drinks himself to sleep at night. So you practically end up raising his daughter. You give her her very first abacus. You encourage her to further her education. You comfort her when she misses her mother and her father. <sighs> Meanwhile, your sporting career takes off. Life is good. Until one day, out of the blue, an accident cripples you. An old friend, Mitchell, tells you he knows someone who can help you. A German doctor. His drugs take some time to work, but uh, they do wonders. You manage to walk for short bursts at a time, little by little. And those bursts keep getting longer. But the drugs aren't cheap at all. So you have to find a way to pay for them, don't you see? So you started by selling drugs to athletes. Then you decided to start an advertising agency to hire those same athletes. Drugs would help them excel, and you'd get better ad deals. The perfect business model. Your first client? Craig Spano. His career had hit a rough patch, so... He was the guinea pig for your new operation. And yet, when the drugs started having serious side effects, you got rid of him. Afraid he would talk, you tried to kill him. That's why he hid. From then on, your business was smooth sailing. You even began to think you were above the law. You thought that you were untouchable. Until Joe Dunn found out, and then, two days before his unfortunate death, he came to see you. That's enough now! You stop it! <sighs> 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 
Now, I don't know if I'm above the law, but I am sure as hell not beneath it. Do you know how much power I have? The kind of people I eat with every day? I could shoot you right now, and nothing would happen to me. With that gun you keep in your drawer? I'm afraid not. I placed your pistol out of reach, just in case you happen to confirm my suspicions, Iron Arm. And now, if you'd excuse me, I have an appointment with the police. I won't let anyone wreck my life again. Sonia and I, we deserve a future. You can come in now, Smirnoff. Timothy Wilson Thorpe, drop your weapon. You're under arrest. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to an attorney. If you cannot afford one, the state will provide one for you. <laughs> Mr. Thorpe. <laughs> Sonia Dunn, you are under arrest for the death of Timothy Wilson Thorpe. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. Just shut up. Sonia should never set foot in jail. Black said, don't. Finding Thorpe guilty would have taken time. Sooner or later, the state of New York would have executed him. Sonia saved us all time. And money. No, there's no way this could work. How do we hide this? John? I'll put the bullets back in the gun. Thorpe had me at gunpoint, but I was faster. We're doing the right thing, Chief. John, why do I end up getting my hands dirty every time I'm close to you? After everything that had happened, the last thing I was interested in was the fight. Did Yale take drugs before the fight? Did Stone let him win? I had done everything in my power for things to go the way my moral compass dictated. Whether anyone would listen to me, 
that was another story. Because no matter what they tell us, our actions don't always determine our future. My moral compass. As if I even knew what that means. I didn't even know what to think of my performance throughout the case. Did I have a clear conscience? Would I have made the same decisions, given the chance? 